Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum. We have 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 3, 1 over 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, so on and so forth. And this goes on forever. Now, with infinite sums, you have to be careful because some infinite sums do not converge. In other words, you cannot find a finite answer. Some of them will conditionally converge. Some of them will absolutely converge, so on and so forth. Later on, we're going to talk about those things. But for this particular sum, here's what we need to pay attention to. How are these numbers formed in the denominator? We have sums in this sum, right? <laughs> kind of like the reciprocals of sums, maybe. So 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 3, what are they? In general, we can write this as 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n. This will be the sum of the first n terms. And there's actually a formula which is known by a Gauss sum. And when Gauss was in elementary school, according to the legend, he kind of thought about this problem his teacher gave the class because the class was acting up, they were being naughty, whatever. And then the teacher was mad and she gave them an assignment. Okay, you're supposed to add all the numbers 1 through 100, right? Again, this may or may not be true. But then little Gauss was super smart, so he just added these numbers. He basically wrote the sum twice, right? And in this case, of course, we're going to talk about numerical answer. But let me just show you the general case, just being like Gauss, but in the general case. Maybe he did that too, who knows? And then he added in columns. So for example, what is n plus 1? n plus 1. What is 1 plus n? n plus 1. What is 2 plus n minus 1? n plus 1. You see? So all we, we do here is adding all these n plus 1s. So the question is then, how many n plus 1s do we have? And the answer is n. Because we have n terms here and n terms here. When you add them in pairs, column-wise, then you get n terms. So this sum is n times n plus 1, which can be written as n squared plus n. But you are adding the same sum twice. So in other words, this is 2s, not s. So to get the answer, you must divide by 2, which gives us the Gauss summation formula for the sum of consecutive positive integers which is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Nice. Now, these numbers are very special. For example, let's just add some of them. 1 is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, so on and so forth. These are called triangular numbers because if you take six dots, you can make a triangular pattern like this. And with two dots, I mean with three, you can also make one. And with one, obviously, you can also make one, right? And notice that there is a pattern and they're all triangular shaped. That's why they're called triangular numbers. Okay, great. We got a formula. We know what they're called. But still, how do we find the sum? Great. Because we have the reciprocals. What would happen if we didn't have the reciprocals? Like we were adding these numbers. 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. Obviously, this would not converge. Because even think about like 1 plus 2 plus 3, so on and so forth. And you know some people just claim falsely, incorrectly, that this can be written as negative 1 over 12. I'm sorry, Ramanujan, but you got it wrong. Anyways, that's a different story. I made a video about it. If I can find it, I'll link it here and maybe down below. But this doesn't converge. But our sum does. How do we know that? Um, I mean, you can kind of... Uh, you, you, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty, so hopefully you'll see. But notice that my sum is in the denominator. So how could I express the sum? So one of the things that will be helpful is the sigma notation. For example, if you have a sum like this, let's start with something simple. Obviously, this is not going to diverge, but it doesn't mean you can't write it using sigma. You're going to put the sigma sign, and then you'll choose an index. Let's just use k. k equals 1 through infinity, and just k. Because you're adding the k, and you increment the k values every time by 1. Make sense? That's what sigma means. This is the lowest value. There's no highest value because infinity is not a number, but you get the idea. I could also replace infinity with n and then write this as limit as n approaches infinity of the sum with k equals 1 through n. Make sense? You can also express it with, we do the same thing with improper integrals. Anytime there's an infinity, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to replace n with infinity because infinity is not a number. So sigma notation is helpful. And what if you had something like this, 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 
plus 5. Do you think this is going to convert? That's another good question, something to think about. And with this expression, we can still use the k, but we also have to multiply it by uh, power of negative 1, because what happens is, in this case, I have to alternate. But since I need to get a positive 1 for k equals 1, I'm just going to put a k plus 1 here, so that if k is 1, this is going to be 1. When k is 2, it's going to be a negative 2. Make sense? So we can express pretty much everything using this. But how do you express this using the sigma notation, right? That's going to be the most important question, maybe the million dollar question. So here's how we can do it. Notice that we have k equals 1 through infinity. We know that this is a, not a finite sum. And here, my general term in terms of k, and by the way, you can also use n, no big deal, but I, I'd like to save the n for the nth term, so I can stop this sum at n and look at the behavior, which, which is something we're going to do. Uh, but uh, the general term is actually this, 1 over 1 plus 2, dot, 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 all the way up to k. I'm just assuming that we're going to have at least two terms, obviously, because this goes all the way up to, by the way, this could be a little misleading because what happens if k is equal to 1? You don't have a 2. Make sense? Okay. Now, notice that I do know this Gauss sum, the expression at the bottom, uh, by the formula, that's going to be k times k plus 1 divided by 2, right? That's the triangular number formula. But I have the reciprocal, so what am I going to do? Flip it. So here's your sum, k equals 1 through infinity. Then you're going to have 2 over k times k plus 1. This is when things get very interesting. You know why? Because we can go ahead and break this down. How? By using partial fractions, which is something nice because sometimes when we integrate, we use them with rational functions. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to assume that, hey, this is made up of two fractions with these denominators, because if you make a common denominator, you're going to get the original expression, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply by k plus 1 here and here, and multiply by k here and here, and then we'll have a common denominator, add the numerators, and set the sum equal to 2. Easy, right? a times k plus 1 plus bk is equal to 2. Notice that there is no k on the right-hand side, which means the coefficient of k is supposed to be 0. So there's two ways to go about it. You can kind of write this as a plus b as the coefficient of k plus a, equals 2. For me, it's obvious that a plus b must be 0 because there's no k on the right-hand side, and a must be 2. But a plus b is 0 implies that b is equal to negative 2. So we got the values of a and b. Now we can go ahead and replace them with those values. So our sum is going to be written as, what? 2 over k minus 2 over k plus 1. Now how is this helpful? Think about it. It is actually very helpful. You know why? Because if you write this with sigma, sigma can be split up into two sigmas. So now you're going to have the following. 1 to infinity of 2 over k minus 1 to infinity of 2 over k plus 1. When you write these sums out, you're going to get something like 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 2 over 3 dot 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 minus 2 over 2 plus 2 over 3 dot, 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 and then if you subtract, you're going to get, you're going to lose all these terms and end up with a 2. Now, obviously, we could also go ahead and do this. We could take the limit as n approaches infinity or k approaches infinity, and then kind of go from there, showing that these uh, terms will cancel out. But basically, that's the whole idea, and you can kind of find the sum and this is going to be 2. And this kind of makes sense, because if you kind of look at the first few terms, like this, we have 1 plus 1 third plus 1 over 6. 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3 is actually equal to 5 over 6. So this is going to be 1 plus 5 over 6, which is kind of close to 2, and obviously you're going to add more and more terms, and it's probably going to approach 2 without exceeding, of course. It's always going to be less than 2, and you can prove it using induction. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.